You get their Bible, you can see it on the board. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Let's start with verse 14 and 15. The last two Sundays and also Wednesday night, we talked about water baptism, that we died with Christ, we were buried with Christ, and we, have, we rose with Christ, and now we are walking in the newness of life. And I want to see that up on the board, which we see it. Are we ready? Listen to what Paul is saying. The Apostle Paul is speaking. He says, For the love of Christ controls and urges and impels us. Stop right there and think for a moment. It's one thing. How many in here can identify when you're hungry? Let me see your hands. Oh, boy, very good. How many here can uh, uh, concern or discern and know when you're thirsty for water? Let's see. Explain that to me. But you know. How many in here knows when the love of God is controlling you or urging you? Think it through now for a moment. That's good. See, I'm, I'm trying to bring your consciousness to because sometimes you don't know all these different feelings in you. You know when you're thirsty. How many is hot right now? Explain that to me. It's a feeling. It's, it's discomfort. You know you're hot. All right. How do you know when the love of God is urging you or compelling you or moving you, some translations, to do something that needs to be done. You need to touch and comprehend and discern that discernment in your spirit man. All right, I'm giving you the th thinking. How many in here knows when you're tired? Look at all the hands go up. How many here knows when you're mad? How many here knows when you're angry? Wow. See, you're so accustomed to those outward natural feelings that is no problem to discern when you're angry, hungry. Well, the spirit man can be trained. The spirit man can be trained to know, hey, God is urging me. The, the love of God is urging me to do this for, for this particular person. Susan was in the um, Walmart, yeah, Walmart. She's the proper woman. She goes afar off and buys and brings things back to her family. So she goes in there, and this woman had a bad leg, a foot, sort of in a little cast type thing. And, and the woman was trying to get one of those chariots and things out and pulled it out and walked, you know, along like that. And Susan said, well, why don't you get one of these over here and ride? You know, they got these carts. That's what I get when I go to Walmart. I enjoy those things. I ride those. I put my glasses on. I ride that. See, when you shop with Susan, boy, you got to have good feet. I'm t well, anyway. So the woman oh, said, thank you. So the woman sits down, and Susan reaches over starts praying for her right in Walmart. Well, how did she know to do that? The love of God urged her, compelled her, moved her to pray for that woman with all those people around. Who cares? So you got to get through that. And she prayed for the woman right there. And the woman looked up and said, thank you. And she drove off her little cart all into Walmart and did her shopping. Well, every Friday morning, Susan goes and gets her hair all prettied up. See, Thursday night, she rolls it all up. And, uh, and she's got her hair all rolled up. And, and I think she's beautiful when, when she has her hair rolled off. I remember it brings back with my three girls and my wife, and they all had their hair rolled up on Saturday night because they were going to church Sunday morning. And that picture is you know, before me. And I thought all my little girls, you know, as they were coming up with their hair all rolled up and all, it touched my heart, you know. So when she rolls her hair up, it reminds me of that. And I say, honey, you look beautiful. Well, anyway, we go to bed. And the next morning, she didn't have a roller in her hair. See, when I sleep at night, I do it like this. And I knock all of her rollers uh, out of her hair. And it is beautiful. She don't even have to go to the beauty parlor. During the night, I have, I have literally transformed her hair. 
I'm just kidding. But I do that sometimes. You'll find a roller on the floor over there. I'm sitting on one, laying on one. I throw it over there. But anyway, so she goes and gets her hair all prettied up every Friday morning. And guess who's in the beauty parlor? The woman that she prayed for in Walmart. And it was like they knew each other for years. Oh, they hugged one another. Oh, thank you for praying for me. Now, isn't that a coincidence? Or is it a coincidence? But you, 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 you need to know when the Holy Spirit is urging you and moving you along. Now, let's read a little bit more. Because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then all died. So actually, when we have the water baptism this morning, you're showing a picture that you have died to your self-life. You have died to that old nature. That the Bible calls it, uh, certain translations, the body of sin, S-I-N, that produces the S-I-N-S's. Okay, 1 John 1, 9 takes care of the S-I-N-S, plur, and the reckoning process takes care of the S-I-N, singular. The S-I-N produces the S-I-N-S. How many of you understand that? Romans 6, 6, 6, 11, 6, 13. Well, if you've been coming, I've been preaching on it. We have the tape back there, DVD. You can get it. So we all died when you come to Christ. So these people that are being water baptized has died to the old nature. And so what we're doing in the water is showing to everybody here that these people have received Christ as their personal Savior. They have died to the old way of living. And we're going to show that by putting them down in the water and they're going to come up out of the water to walk in the newness of life. So that's a picture. Now I want us to read this next verse, very important verse. Verse 15, we'll put that up on the board. And he died for all. Now who is he? Let's identify he. Christ died for all. So that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves... Now, that's an important thing. But to and for him, that is for Christ, who died and was raised again for their sake. Now, I want you to see something. That we might live no longer for ourselves. And it's hard for people to grasp this. And I, I had to work through it, believe me, in my Christian life. How many was here Friday night? Let me see your hands. I just want to see. Okay. Let me show you the picture that I saw in all of that. These people were coming to the church, and you remember that the, the minister's wife, they were in an automobile accident, and she died, and she was carrying a child, and they had a young boy about 10 years old. They all got killed except the pastor. So three years later, his hope is gone. It's like he's lost his faith. faith. He is absolutely Walking like he's dead. How many remember, remember that picture? And everybody in his congregation was just about like he was. Sort of dead. All right. What happened is this. They were all living for themselves. Notice the mayor. He wanted to be mayor of the town for himself. That he might make a lot of money. See, he was living for himself. All the other people in the church, they remember that one guy that came around and needed help, and nobody helped him. They were living for themselves. The real estate woman, she was selling houses. She didn't care if people lived out on the street or not. She was not living for God. She was living for herself. How many remember the picture? And I want you to see it, and, and you can identify with this now, what I'm saying. The, the real estate woman that had a, the mother that lived in the house with her, and they had everything. They were really looked like rich folks. Remember that? And uh, what happens is one guy comes into town, and he asks everybody for a job that he could work and make some money, and nobody would give him a job because they were all caught up in themselves. They were all living for themselves. And you got the picture? I want you to see that now. 
and, and many of them were Christians. They didn't help other people. They was just living for themselves. What is it? What am I going to get out of it? Am I going to look good? Am I going to get rich? Am I going to look like the number one man on the block? That's living for self. And what happens is when this one guy came in and got up in church, and I'm cutting it short because of the time this morning, he began to speak and people begin to see themselves. You remember that picture? Remember he got up in the church building and began to speak and all of a sudden he collapsed because nobody would even feed him. But God used that to wake them up, to show them they were all living for themselves and not living for the Lord and for others. And, and there was a transformation in all of their lives, and they began to do things for other people. You remember the picture? See the picture? Now they quit living for themselves. They begin to live for him who died for them and live for others. Because when you do something for people, you're doing it for the Lord. How many of you know that? When you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me, Jesus said. And if you will capture that picture, if every wife will capture that picture, every husband will capture that picture, you're living for him or you're living for your family, you're living for your children, you're living for the body of Christ, and all of that is living for him. Now, that doesn't mean you go hungry. That doesn't mean that you don't have a great time. That means you'll be set free, free from that old nature, from that old body of sin that controls and makes your life miserable. And the more you can get released of that power of sin, the life of Christ just comes to the surface. The life of Christ, you, don't have, you can't pump it up. It just comes, it just floats up. It's the Spirit of God. It just floats up into your life, and you begin to live by the life of another how many sees the picture? Let's see if you see the picture. For those that were here and saw the DVD, okay? Now, what you have, and, and I, I don't say this with cruelty. I don't say this with malice in my heart. And I've been around a pretty long time, but when you look at people, the church as a whole, you see churchy, churchy, people living for themselves and not really living for him or for others. If somebody's depressed, you know what I do? I get them busy doing something for somebody else, and that'll break that depression. Because self is a vicious circle, living for self, all for self. You become a very self-centered person, and that's why so many people have so many problems. But when you can come out of yourself and let him live his life in you, you begin to live for others. You begin to live for Christ. That sets you free from that vicious self-centeredness that all of us have, including your pastor, if, we let that, if I let that, that dude stick his head up and rule my life. Okay? So when you are water baptized this morning, that old man that loves to be gratified, loves to be number one, that loves to be the top notch, loves to be first in the crowd, loves, you don't, how many understand what I'm talking about? You know. See, you humble yourself, and guess what? God gives grace to the humble, and he lifts that person up. Isn't that amazing? He will exalt you in due time, and you don't have to work for it. You don't have to make yourself look like a selfish individual. See, Susan learned that a long time ago. Because I was a debater, but she wouldn't debate. And the Holy Spirit just began to move in my life and change me from glory to glory. And it's all done by the Holy Spirit. There's no strain in it. You know, when I first started as a Christian, and some of you can identify with this, you just strain to be good, don't you? Let me tell you something. When God does that work in you, listen to me. You don't have to strain doing what is right. It's like Frank says. 
You practice something long enough, if you start here in the negative, then it'll move on down it, seven years down the road. You'll be doing that in a greater way, and you'll be in bondage to it. And yet if you start living for God here, as seven years goes by, it'll be so easy to live for God. You'll be the most happiest, contented person. It flows. You don't have to work at it. You don't have to make yourself to love people. You don't have to make yourself to serve God. You don't have to make yourself to be here on time. You don't have to make yourself to give money. You don't have to make yourself do anything. It is his life that just flows out of these vessels. Hello. I just said something. That's living in the spirit. This woman said to the man that was laying in bed one morning, said, honey, she said, honey, get up. And he said, I don't want to get up. I want to sleep. And she says, you got to get up. And he said, why should I have to get up? And she said, because you're the preacher. Doing that transition, there's a transition, and I want everyone to listen to me that is being water baptized. And just like Frank said, you might be up right, right now, and, and, and you will go through some seasons, but those seasons are for your growth and your maturity. But he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And, and if you're really born again, you will seek him. How many in here that would have, let's say, uh, uh, let's make it interesting, a million dollars and you lost it around the house? How many would just say, that's okay? How many would seek for it? You got the picture. Lord, where are you? How many remembers, and I'll turn the tape back when we were kids, hide and seek? Remember hide and seek? How many of you ever played hide and seek when you was kids? Yeah, that, I got you. That's good. I'm drawing you in now. And you would seek that person out because you wanted to tag them. You're it. You take off and get onto the base, you see. You had to seek them out, trying to find them. You was hiding behind a telephone pole. You was under, under some type of step. You was hiding. See, there is a seeking. And God does that he knows what he's doing because you see if you really realize how important he is in your life you will seek him out just like you would seek that million dollars out you won't rest until you find that million dollars and the blessed thing about the lord is when he sees you seeking him with all your heart he'll show up boom and now you've grown some. You've matured some. And now he walks with you and you have fellowship with him for a while, you know. And, and it may last for another a year or two years. I had two years in my life that totally went black. I didn't feel that God existed. But I, for those two years, I seek God. I got into the Word of God. In those two years, I became a Bible scholar. I couldn't feel his presence. And I had the devil eating me alive. But I, I seek the Lord with all my heart during those two years. And when I broke through on the other side, I was a different man. Because in those two years of darkness, I didn't realize it. But God was putting into me his very, the essence of his very nature. And when I come out, see, it's like that seed in the ground. It's dark down here, but you're going to be a squash one day. I don't want to be a squash. I want to be a turnip. All right, you're a turnip seed. But how many of you know that little seed stays in the ground? 
And it is in the darkness of that ground that it dies. One morning you go out there and you see a little sprout. You know why that little sprout is coming out of the earth? Because something died. That little seed died. And now it released the power that was in it. And now this stalk begins to grow if it's a stalk of corn. And nice corn begins to form on that stalk. How many likes corn? Yeah. You see, you wouldn't have corn if that little seed had not died. Gave up its identity as a little kernel and became a plant, a new creature, and began to grow and mature and bear fruit for your sake that you might eat of it and live. I know when we look at it in the natural, it's like thumbs down. But see, God's ways are different than our ways. Let's read it again. And he died for all so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves, but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake. One more story, and then we're going to go ahead and... Uh, Michelle and uh, Melody is going to sing as we get ready for the water baptism. When I was about 17 years old, you remember those days when you were 17? I stayed out all night. I had my own car. I worked, had my own money. I stayed out all night. I came in about 7.30 that next morning, dad and mom were cooking breakfast. and I think that's probably why I came home. But anyway, uh, I remember dad saying, son, where have you been? Oh, well, we just, you know, riding around. What makes young people like to stay up all night? Have you figured that one out yet? What you, huh? How many ever did that, just want to stay up all night? Let me see your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, now some of, okay. So anyway... I uh, stood up and I came in. I, said, I, I stayed out all night and I came in that morning. And, and Dad said, son, when you stay out like that, you, your mom and me worry about you. And I'm going to tell you something. The light came in on in my mind. Dad and mom? Oh. They have feelings? I thought I was the only one who had feelings. See, I was enjoying myself. And if you've had kids and they stay out all night, that'll make your hair fall out. I had no consideration for them whatsoever. Who are they? And I could go on a long story to tell you who they are, but... I want you to see the point. See, my immaturity was, it's about Bob enjoying my night, doing what I want to do, living for myself. No consideration for them whatsoever. Any bells going off in here? Amen. All right, I heard a couple bells. Oh, my wife has feelings? Oh, my husband has feelings? Oh, I thought I was the only one in the world, see, living for self. Come on, church. How many has ever been there? Come on, come on. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. I know. But all of a sudden, you know, the light floods in. And I have to now consider Charles. It's not always about me. My wife, I have to consider about her. When I make a decision, how is it going to affect her? Yes. As a pastor, the way I live, the way I conduct myself, I have to consider all of you guys. 
If I do this particular thing, yeah, but I like to do it. Yeah, that's pretty good, you know. I mean, I, you know, it, it ain't all about me no more. So you reach a, a, a point of maturity that you lose yourself in him. And then you can say with Paul, it is no more I that liveth, but it is Christ that lives within me. I live by the life of another. I know some of you straining to comprehend it. Just keep straining. You won't learn that way. Just say, Lord, show me. And the next time you do something and you have a husband and you're a wife, consider his feelings and vice versa. Well, I'm young, and I'm only young one time, and I believe in sowing my oats. Yeah, and you'll reap what you sow, too. I want to say that again. You'll reap what you sow, too. Come on, I love you. I'm not being ugly. I'm telling you, you will reap. But, you know, I used to take that in the negative. Hey, that works in the positive, too. Aha, uh -huh. click, boom, ah, uh, start, Woo. start sowing good seed. You get good seed. Somebody tell me, if you sow okra, what are you going to get? If you sow corn, what are you going to get? Corn. If you sow evil, what are you going to get? Evil. That's why the Bible says overcome evil with good. Well, if you slap me on one side of the face, you're going to be get it. You're going to be on the floor and just like that. Just go ahead and slap me in the face. And see what I do. What does the Bible say? Turn the other cheek. There's a scripture that really floored me. These Christians were suing one another. And Paul says, why not just take the wrong? Do what? Why not just take the wrong? Well, you know what they did to me? I'm going to sue them double time. Why not just take the wrong? See, we think we know what Christianity is all about, but do we really know what real Christianity is all about? I know we, most of us do, but some folks think it's all about getting and no giving. I can honestly say, and I'm going to close on this, someone said, praise God, uh, I'm going to honestly say this. It is more of a blessing to me to give than to receive now. Now, I don't know if that's true in your life. But I'm saying that that's what the work of the Holy Spirit will do in your life. As you obey the word and let him do that work in you. It is no effort at all, no effort at all, just to love people. I had a man at work when I worked at the air base. He was so mean to me. He snubbed me. He rejected me. He talked about me. He did everything he could. So I went home and got my gun. I went out there and I shot him. That's what we do, not with a gun, but we, we say, see, I got this little grudge about uh, so-and-so back there. Yeah, yeah. We shoot them with our mouth. Now think for a moment. Do you want people to talk about you? Do unto others before they get a chance to do it unto you, right? Huh? Huh? No. Do unto others as you would have them. See, it's simple. It's not complicated, but there has to be a death. And that death has to be that old carcass, that old power of sin, that if we allow it, it will cause us to divorce three or four people. Well, I'll marry the fifth one. Go ahead. Be the same thing. You're just going to carry the same thing over into the next marriage. Now, I know there's different reasons why people get divorces. You understand that. I understand those things. 
But some of it is ridiculous because the self is the problem. And when you go down in that water this morning, everybody wave goodbye to self. Say, I'm dead, indeed, under sin, but I am alive under God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. But how does it work, Bob? You don't have to know how to work. Just take the aspirin. Just take the Word of God in you. The aspirin will work. Just put the Word of God in you. The Bible says it will work in you. And get it in you. All right, our singers are going to come up and sing. And we're going to get ready for the water baptism. The girls go over on that side, my far right, and the men over here on my left. Conform it to your 
the, uh, I got right here. I said if you need oh, it louder. Is it working? That's good. We're going to go ahead and uh, get the men first. We got three, so first one, come on down. Anybody wants to take pictures, feel free to do so. Nice warm water. Oh, warm, yeah. Nice and warm. Nice and warm. Okay. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes, I do. Have you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior? With all my heart. Yes, Have you? Do you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead? I sure do. Then the Bible says you're saved. Amen. My son, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Risen to walk in the newness of life. Father, I break every curse ten generations back, losing them from all bondages, and I thank you, Father, right now. Thank you, Lord, for filling him with the Holy Ghost right now, Lord. Let your spirit just flow into him right now. In Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Be filled, my son. Lord, every hurt, every wound is being healed by the stripes of Jesus, and we thank you for that. Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Look like a new man to me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hallelujah. Woo. I'm going to get your man first. Oh, my goodness. Next. Next. Woohoo! Come on, Monk's Corner. This young man is from Lake City, South Carolina. Oh, wow. That's where all my people <laughs> were born and grew up in Lake City. And the best two years of my life on the farm with my grandmother when I was about 10 years old, I spent in Lake City, South Carolina, plowed an old mule. Good memories. My son, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Yes, do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Yes, then the Bible says you're saved. I baptize you, my son, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> you're all right. 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 Hold steady. Hold steady. It's all right. Should have held your nose. You okay? Okay. That's <laughs> Glory. Glory. All right, next up. Let me pray. Father, I thank you right now. I break every curse ten generations back. I loosen him from all bondages. And I thank you for the total victory of Calvary. Heal every hurt, every wound by the stripes of Jesus. Let peace now reign in his life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, you okay? Yeah, he's okay. He does it. All right, hold your nose the next time you go down. Close your mouth. Accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that he is the Son of God? Then, my son, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is Christ. Woo! Walk in the newness of life. Okay. Lord, just fill him now with the Holy Ghost. Fill him now with power. Thank you, Lord, for that power of the Holy Ghost. In Thank Jesus' Lord. name, Thank fill him, Lord. Fill him, Lord. Fill him, Lord, with your Thank love. You, Lord. Fill him, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Thank you Lord, for all the gifts to flow. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Woo, glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Here comes the girls. I haven't lost one yet. <laughs> Don't start now, boy. Okay. Do 
you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Then the Bible says you're saved. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus. Where is it to walk in the newness of life? Father, I break every power of darkness ten generations back. Loosen her now, and I thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost upon her. Thank you, Lord, for wisdom to flow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for healing every hurt, every wound by the stripes of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Years ago when I first found out that the picture that water baptism shows, I saw it myself. And I said, I want to be re-water baptized. So I got this minister to baptize me in my swimming pool. And he did. And the power of God hit me, and I started floating in the pool. Wow. Like that. You ready to float? <laughs> Are you ready? Relax. <laughs> Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Have you received him as your Lord and Savior? Then, my daughter, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus. Arisen to walk in the newness of life. Father, I break all the powers of hell over her right now. Fill her with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Spirit to heal every hurt, every wound. I cut her loose from everything of the past. In the name of Jesus, it is a new day, a new start, a new life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me go ahead. Just be healed, be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed, my daughter. Be healed. Be healed. Break all accusations of the enemy over her yes, life now yes, in Jesus' name. Yes, the past yes, is gone yes, forevermore. Yes, buried with Christ. Yes, risen yes, to walk in the newness of life. Thank you, thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank wow. You. Oh, God. We love you, Sheila. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. never know when the Lord will show up. Suddenly, boom. believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Do you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Then the Bible says you're saved. My sister, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Risen to walk, walk in the newness of life. Fill our Lord with your power now. Fill our Lord. Heal every hurt, every wound. Every expectation that was in that, every disappointment, Lord, I cut her loose from it all right now. All the past, gone, forgotten, buried, 
walking as a new creature in Christ, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled yes. with that new life of God. Yes, Thank you, Father, for that blessing. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for that healing. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, yes, amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You know, sometimes people need to be water baptized and the enemy will keep you from it, believe me. He will keep you from obeying God. And uh, you gotta, you got to push forward. you got to say no to the devil, no to the flesh. I'm going to obey God. And there's a scripture in 1 Peter 1.22 that says that our souls are purified by obeying the truth. Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Have you accepted him into your heart? Yes. Do you believe that Christ raised him from the dead in your heart? Yes. Then I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus, risen, walking, and lives of life. Father, I thank you for that victory. Fill her now with the Holy Ghost. Fill her right now, Father, with your power. Lord, I cut her loose ten generations back from any curse. The past is gone. It's a new day, a new start in God, walking in the Spirit and by the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Thank you for filling her now Thank with your presence. You. The Lord, let all the gifts and let the peace of God just overflow. Yes. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Yes, Lord. Turn to Michelle and say hallelujah. <laughs> you know, there, there's many different manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And we don't get caught up with the manifestations. But you know when God is around because things really happen. And uh, I just thank God for all, all of you. And if you haven't been water baptized yet, think about it. Get that tape back there. We got tapes on it. We got literature on it. And um, the, you're not saved by this experience. But it is an experience with God that, that's very important. Because he gives a picture to the world. There's times when you've got to stand up and say, I belong to God. I stand for what God stands for. And by his grace and his mercy, I'm going to walk. Uh, with his strength in this generation, I'm going to bless others. And you make that, you drive that stake down and you don't move from it. And you remember that. And I thank God that uh, for every one of you, if you haven't been water baptized, then the next time we got plenty of water, we'll fill the tank up again and uh, get you water baptized. i got some good literature on the back there that talks about it. Get it, read it, understand it. And uh, each day as you go along, remember... We are the people of God. We are God's new creation. We're not of the old anymore. We have no obligation to walk the old life any longer. God will show us the new life and we will walk it. And if we do make a mistake, we'll say, God, thank you for 1 John 1, 9. Somebody say, thank you for 1 John 1, 9. Thank Amen. You. It's there if we need it. But Paul said, sin shall not have dominion over you any longer. That power has been broken. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Stand to your feet. Turn to somebody. And uh, wait. Sit back down. <laughs> You've already sang your song. Yes, sir. We're clear. Uh, Charles and Rachel would stand up here. Anybody here that's never received Christ or you have been 
you've been living in the world, you know you've been living in the world and by the principles of the world, and you want to make a fresh start, come up and see Charles and Rachel, and they will pray with you, make your commitment to Christ now, publicly, do it, and God will bless you. You may stand to your feet now, and uh, Frank will put an invitation hymn on. Thank you. <laughs>